Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa rasulillah. Uh, we're here with Imam Talk. So this is a, a podcast that's supposed to sit down imams so we can compare notes, we can reflect and remind each other and reflect upon our own individual communities, our own individual lives, and sort of the North American Dawa scene and what we can do to keep improving and building each other up. So we're here today with Imam Daniel Hernandez. MashaAllah, thank you so much for being with us. The Imam of uh, the um, the Muslim Association of Lehigh Valley, correct? Yes. MashaAllah, yes. tabarakallah. Um, so one of the questions that, that's significant to me, so uh, thinking more of on a personal level, is that sometimes we have experiences before we're practicing, mm -hmm. or in our cases, before we're even a Muslim. Yeah. And somehow, unexpectedly, that experience prepares us. Mm -hmm to do the work that we're doing now mm -hmm. as an imam, mm -hmm. very unexpected ways. So uh, sort of something along those lines. Is there something in your life that sort of Allah used in your experiences before you were Muslim or before you were practicing that prepared you <laughs> in an unexpected way for the work that you do now? I, I would say the, the first step was you know, uh, coming in contact with Islam, right? Con coming in contact with Islam well, well, you know, I used to play basketball in high school. So coming in contact with Islam was like, Jordan retired, 1993, I needed a favorite player. I picked Chris Jackson. He converted, changed his name to Mahmoud Abdurraouf. Yeah, wow. Right? So I just came across his uh, basketball card, the basketball card that actually began to teach me about Islam. SubhanAllah. So in the back it said, Mahmoud Abdurraouf, Converted in this year, uh, went to Hajj this year, and changed his name to Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. And Mahmoud means this, Abdul means this, Rauf means this. So I began in in high school search, going to in study hall, going to the library and searching about Islam. Right, and I started. I found a, a page with. Quran translation of the small surah. So I started writing them down in my notebook wow, and I took them home and in computer class, I printed a picture of the Kaaba. I was a Muslim and I put it in my room, put it in my room. And just because I, he's my favorite, he was my favorite player. So I saw that I wanted to be like him. So I was uh, in 93, right? It's 93. So that was the, the way that I was introduced. I would say that the, the past influence where where I was going is because Allah you know started to introduce Islam started to introduce uh, true Islamic commitments through basketball because that year uh, I couldn't watch the New York Knicks right I couldn't watch the Denver Nuggets because they weren't that popular so it's like they, we didn't have that many channels. So I ended up picking the New York Knicks, right? Because I was born in New York. So now the New York Knicks, you know, my favorite player became uh, John Starks. So he was sixth man of the year. So John Starks went to the All-Star game and the Knicks made it to the finals. They played versus the Rockets. My brother was cheering for the Rockets. Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, fasting, practicing as Dean, blocked Starks, or tipped the ball, and the Houston Rockets won the championship. So I used to hate Hakeem, right? <laughs> I used to hate, right? I was blessed with, 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 with telling him in his face. <laughs> and then we became close, you know? Because he met me as an imam. I said, look, you know, I, I didn't like you back in the days. But, uh, so, so that was my, my introduction to, to Islam. So I, I would say music as well. Music as well. I used to do uh, a Spanish rap before it became popular in the States. And in, in, those, in those days, uh, that was, it, was, it was illegal in Puerto Rico. Wow, really? It was illegal. It was called underground. Subhanallah. It was called, if you were caught with the tapes, you would get a fine or something like wow. that. Yeah. So we were doing that in the clubs in New York and in Jersey and so on. So I was getting ready to prepare uh, to record a, an album. I had my 12 songs, everything was set. But then I was coming through the transitional stage, right? 
So when I began to change, began to become more conscious, I started avoiding listening to content that was just immoral because I came, I came from a house of with, 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 with a stable home where my parents have been, you know, w were married for, you know, until now, like, you know, 50 plus years of marriage. And I, and I seen uh, like a, an Islamic marriage, you know, type of thing, right? The adab and manners. So I, I have these values. So I began to kind of change the, 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 what I was listening to. So I started listening to, all of a sudden I'm listening to this group called uh, Killer Army, okay. right? And one of the, and I was a Muslim, but I'm walking in the streets with my, with my, with my, with my Sony radio, right? <laughs> I'm walking in the street, loud, making everyone listen to what I'm listening to. There was no AirPods back in the days. It was just like everybody stuck. So I'm, I'm walking, and uh, and the song is uh, Allah sees everything, everything. Allah sees everything. So I, I'm walking the street saying Allah sees everything. I'm not Muslim. You know, so these things, um, a phrase from Tupac also impact me. The key to living life is, no, another, another, another uh, uh, verse from Killer Army was, the key to living life is refinement. Without knowledge yourself, you ain't never going to find it. SubhanAllah. That's deep. <laughs> so, so I've been on that man hedge. <laughs> I've been on that and the, and that manhaj of like you know always continuing uh, learning. So I would say I wasn't Muslim, but 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 these things were put in there when I was when I was searching. Like I didn't have, I couldn't trust human beings. Right. Yep. So I'm here searching and I'm like asking God and these things were being used. I I wouldn't recommend somebody just saying you know what because of that I'm gonna justify. And try to use those means to find guidance. You know, that's re reversing the cycle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but for where you were at. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So this is like, you know, there were challenges. So the question is like, why, why would I not trust human beings? Right. Why would, you know, what, what, so the reason is, you know, I had uh, my, you know, I was with my friends on a, on a Sunday and on Monday, I see them on the news that they were killed by my own friends. You understand? So like that's why I don't trust I couldn't trust my my circle, right? So I'm like, no. So then that's when I began like searching and that's when I began uh, reading the Quran. So I would say that <clears throat> that commitment to searching and you know when I read the ayah uh and Abu I said that's what I'm gonna do. I'm only gonna worship God and I'm only gonna seek his help. Right. Yes, the other is uh, our wasail, uh, their means, but I'm going to really rely on on getting it from trusting, really trusting that Allah will be able to to guide me. So that's, I would say, that's how it prepared me for, so I always, I try not to forget where I came from because you have to kind of find, uh, you know, fawaid in, in Islam, you keep whatever good, and you leave whatever is not good. So I, I, I try to like not, you know, sometimes just for reflection, I'll listen, I'm like, where, where was I at? You know, how, uh, like, I don't just shun it or close, because it's something that is part of the story. You know, it's part of the story. And that's why it, it makes me feel like, you know, like, um, what well, is relevant in, in, in our reality nowadays Right, we can be, uh, we can be hard on a particular ruling for, let's say, music. Right, we could just be hard and say, you know, mutlaqan no. But you know, as parents, we have children, we have this, we have that. You know, in in an environment where you cannot avoid, you know, even in productions and stuff, you cannot avoid music, even doing film, you cannot avoid music because they use it to edit, right? They use it to edit and so on so that the movie can flow. So therefore, it's almost unavoidable. You go, if a, if a child works in the mall, he's gonna be hearing music all day. If he works in the th movie theaters, music all day. Uh, so realistically is, you know, teaching our youth how to 
choose and refuse, you know, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. to pick and choose whatever is good, and they're, they're responsible for that. And it's not, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to give, like, a definite... I, I know there's, you know, views, and yes, there's the, the jumhur and all that, but I'm trying to think realistically. I'd rather have my child do it in my face than what, this, what we say in, in, in Jahiliya, backstab me. Do it behind my back. That's khiyana. Right, it is worse for your child to, for you to find out years later that your child is doing it behind your back. You know, that's so there should be a level of trust. And then as parents, we have to be patients, you know. So it, it, it's not, it, you know, it, it's very easy to say no. Right. There's a theoretical aspect to it, but then there's a practical aspect to it. Many parents, they, this, you know, they, they find out years later and they're like, oh, my son has been doing this. Uh, so what was your approach initially? You were very strict. How was your relationship? So now he mm -hmm. shuts down. He doesn't want to approach you. And so therefore, that is what you're going to get. Yeah. SubhanAllah. So unless you're patient, I don't know how you do it. I said, no, you have to, man. This is your child. You have to. It's easy to, to try with anybody else. Right. Yeah. So, so that's something that <clears throat> on a personal basis, I think it's, it's good to... So that I try to apply that, you know, those experiences, understanding the, the, the change in times and, 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 and then now, but for my individual self, yeah, we can be strict on ourselves religiously, right? But with others, we have to show rahma and rifq and sabr and, you know, we... Because we were there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's we like, oh there. man, I pray that you get here, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, it's like, <laughs> right. you know, what's going you, you have, alhamdulillah, you know, some people, they find it easy to, it's easier to just, you know, cover it up. It's not healthy. It's not psychologically healthy for the parents. It's not psychologically healthy for the children. Right. It trains you on... It's better fact. to be just, you know, I, I always tell you know, any youth, be yourself, man, wherever you are. MashaAllah. That's great. Um, how do you maintain <clears throat> sincerity, sincerity and privacy as an imam and a public figure? So, you know, I try to, I will say, um, one is output and input, right? Output is what you, you know, what you're, what you're teaching, what you're, what you're, what you're sharing with the community your advices and everything your lectures khutbas but then your input is you know what you're what you're investing in yourself right so i i always try to you know since alhamdulillah since the first time i took the the post as an imam and to because the first years i avoided taking a post because i wanted to know the community right so when i moved to houston I lived in Houston for 11 years. I avoided khutbas uh, for like one year until I got, I started working in an Islamic school. And through there, I got to know the kids, the teachers, administrators, leaders. So I got to know the community. So then I went, started doing khutbas. <clears throat> so I think I have always, you know, if I, have, if I teach something, I always try to study and, and, and continue learning. And I don't stop. Uh, I try to like, you know, if a particular text I want to master, I'll, you know, end up studying it like 40 times Mashallah. just to feel like, you know, to get some uh, itqan and some mastery in it. <clears throat> so I think that's the, that's what has kept me balanced, right? I keep connected with the ulama. I keep connected with the scholars. I always reach out and and they know that I don't reach out to, to waste their time, you know? So I reach out with ihtiram. Like I tell people, like for example, how many times you go to a gathering and you meet a sheikh and you meet, you know, a, a famous sheikh or a, a scholar, an alim, like somebody, not, not somebody who just has a title, but somebody who's an alim, who is, you know, who has the, 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 the kabul of the ulama worldwide, right? <clears throat> like Sheikh Salah, right? like Sheikh yep. Salah, sorry, right? Hafidahullah. And people come and they will ask him a question. You know, so I tell community members, I tell people when I used to be in Houston, 
and even administrators, I said, listen, if you guys want to respect the time of the sheikh, then you guys should invest in having his fatwas translated. There you go. Mashallah. And, and so you invest in that. And then whenever you have a question, before you ask the sheikh, you make your effort to search if the sheikh uh, already, uh, already, already answered it. Already answered it. <laughs> Subhanallah. Right? That used to bother me so much. You understand? <laughs> like, listen, people, like, uh, search. You can, and, and I said, if you don't want to read the book, you go, you use the app. So that's, so what I, so some of my teachers, right, like I reach out to them, you know, alhamdulillah, like Sheikh Walid Manisi and others and uh, Sheikh Taha, Sheikh, Sheikh um, Muhammad Said Rahawan, who was in, in Medina and uh, Jamin Tatayba, but he's back in, in Egypt and in Azhar. You know, so I reach out to them, and 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 they respond right away. You know, they respond. Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad Zuhaili, you know, they respond. I can send a message, and you know, the same day, you know, Sheikh Walid will, will respond to me. You know, uh, and Alhamdulillah, some imams, you know, not at that caliber. You might have weeks before you get a response. You know, uh, but that's something that I respect because that's the way I was taught, right? Uh, so when I see them in person, I show them that respect, that ihtiram, that, uh, you know, like, you know, I'm in a line, I went to Amja, and, and not, not to say anything, Allah knows best, Allah knows best, but it's just, uh, you know, because this is uh, imam talk, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. I hope that this is, the, you know, this, mentioning this is for imams, to be conscious of where they are. So I, I want to make sure that this is known, that this is not for the general public. You should know this, but don't think that we're just telling you to respect imams. We're also telling imams to know who's superiors, who are your superiors, who are, you know, higher knowledge. And you should also have this, this, this ihtiram. And, and subhanAllah, these scholars, they don't, they don't, uh, expect it you know they don't they're, they're very humble so when i was in in amja uh, we were getting the food right so i ended up being in the front of the, of the line so when i look i look at I, i'm right away looking for like sheikh walid i'm looking i'm looking and i see him in the back of the line so in the back towards the back so i went i skipped the whole line in the front I got food for the sheikh. MashaAllah. I went all the way to the back, and I took the sheikh to, to sit down, got him a drink, you know, and and that's it. MashaAllah. You understand? Like, yeah. Okay. No, it's ayib. It's ayib. No, no, I know, it's but a, the thing is, yeah. like, people are busy. People are busy talking about, with all the respect, you know, their personal endeavors. Uh, their projects. Uh, you understand people have different itijahat, different angles. But you can't, like, you can't be blind and, and be like, you know, uh, you know, somebody like Sheikh Zuhaili, Hafidahullah, who's been teaching fiqh for over 40 years, you know, who has books, who just did the fiqh al bulugh al-maram and al-mu'tamad and the Shafi madhab and others, and he's an alim, and we have him in the States, you know. And so we need to, you know, show ihtiram, you know. <clears throat> and one way is not just by sheikh. What do you think about this? Yeah. <laughs> Sitting down and, you know, hi, you know, hi, uh, taking over the, the sheikh's time and, and during breakfast to talk about, you know, your masail. Right. Uh, but you know how you make the sheikh happy, you know, just... And show him that you appreciate his work. You know, Sheikh, I, I did, I, I finished uh, with you in this book, Al Wajiz and Asul Al Fiqh. And Sheikh, you know, I've been looking at your uh, new recordings of Fiqh Al Bulug Al Maram. And, and, and he was like, so he got happy. He started explaining and this and that. You know, Fiqh Al Hayat, the Fiqh of Life, he has like 150 plus 
recording. SubhanAllah. You understand? So, so acknowledging and knowing kind of changes the conversation because now the Sheikh knows that you've been benefiting from his output. And so now he, you, you, you're not just coming to, 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 to pick some fruits from, from the tree and just leaving, you know, there is some relationship. So whenever I have a mess, a, a mess in the community, you know, that's the way I, I, I deal with it. You know? So it's just the adab, the manners and alhamdulillah. That's so important for people to hear. And that's really, I'm glad, really, really glad you mentioned that. And it gives us an opportunity, like the lower guys down on the chain for khidmah, right? Because many of these things, they're, they're written in Arabic. Maybe they're not translated. If they're translated, exactly. they're not a YouTube series. If they're a YouTube series, they're not on Instagram. And so you have like a whole downstream thing where actually the smaller, you know, low guys like, like me can actually give khidmah and service to the real mashayikh by taking their stuff and repurposing it. And, you know, that would be a good thing for the relationship. And the thing is, like, you know, I, like I had, I was talking to one time a, 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 a brother, you know, who works for a, a publishing house, right? And, and this brother was telling me, you know, in this publishing house, we only have books with authentic hadith. I said, with all the respect, I'm not, you know, calling you a liar, but that's not true. Mm -hmm. And so then I, I asked him, I said, Mera Yukan, what do you think about Ibn Hajar Asqalani? Oh, mashallah, he, he explained Bukhari. And I said, okay, he's in, in you know, uh, Sheikh Al Hadith. And, you know, he's, yeah. I said, okay, so what about, uh, have you seen Bulugh Al Maram? Bulugh Al Maram has weak hadith. He said, no, no. I said, look. So we opened it. The first bab, Tahara, look, weak hadith. Afterwards, authentic hadith. So how do you understand that? So I, I explained, I said, look, Ibn Hajar Asqalani has a manhaj, and he has a reason. So mahwal manhaj wa mahwal maqsid. Was the uh, methodology was the reason. So, I, so before Sheikh, uh, 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 Sheikh uh, uh, Zuhairi published his book, right? I was already doing that, 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 uh, doing that study with, with Sheikh Yusuf Rios. So we were taking Bulugh al-Maram and we were using, we were using uh, the explanation of Qasam, is it? Tawdih al Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, so we were doing that. I benefited so right, much from so that. So we were doing that, right? But then we were we were we were taking the the uh, Musal al Hadith, the science of Hadith part from uh, Nukhbat al Fikr. Okay, mashallah. And it another, and then we were taking the Fiqh of the Hadith from Kitab al Majmu of Imam Nawawi. Mashallah. So we were finding the Hadith in it. Wow. Right, and we were seeing the analysis of. So then we found that the reason why Ibn Hajar Asqalani put this week Hadith first and the authentic Hadith afterwards is because. This hadith was in the in the Madhab Imam Shafi al Qadim. Ah, oh, okay, mashallah. And then this one is Madhab Imam Shafi al Jadid. So there's, there's a, a reason. There's a reason, yeah, right? Mashallah. There's a reason, but at least you know, like like in Usul Fik Tartib al Adilla, right? The order of of the Adilla. But anyways, but the thing is, like you know, you value you 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 you. So I was explaining to the brother. I said, look. So this is where, why the ulama they understand, they say that the usage of weak hadith is allowed for particular reasons. Not just to, to as, a, a, as a proof, but just to know that it exists and is not uh, rejected. So th those things, you know, just kind of raising the level of the people's consciousness, right, it is important. But again, in the English language, we'll, we'll limit it. Right, like one thing that I hope that I hope that in the future, that I hope in the future we have, is that similar to like the Arabic books where you have in the beginning the title, the the muallif, the the, the, the author, and then the muhakkik. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The dakhrij. Yeah. Oh, that would be nice. You understand? Yeah, yeah. So you you have a whole map in the cover of the book, right? right? 
But sometimes in the English language, you don't have that, right? You, you have, you know, the, the, maybe the author of, of, the, of the original book, and then you have the translator. Or sometimes you have just the translator. And it makes it seem that he's the author, but he's actually using somebody else's book, right? So I think if we can, that's a, that's a good way to value specializ uh, specialization, right? It, 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 so it's a, and that's what we need to educate the community that we have this, this uh, ta'amuk, this you know, this depthness in in the knowledge of the deen and this, uh, it, yes, it's but uh, you know and all the general community needs to do is understand that it exists and have confidence in it. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the uh, Imams should be humble to follow that manhaj and, 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 and show, right. And kind of educate the community. You don't have to put, give that information to the community because they're not, they may not have the, 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 the stamina or the tahammul that, you know, to, 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 to carry it. But but that's the the, the way I, I try to keep myself sincere is by learning. Like learning, I know, you know, we know what we have studied. We know what we have mastered. So maybe I studied this book once. Yeah, maybe the Sheikh was generous and gave me a jaza or a certificate. But do I have, uh, uh, do I have a, a mastery of it? No. Do I remember the stuff? No. So I need to study it again. Things like that, like being so self-conscious and, and, and holding yourself accountable to. Once I study it this many times, then I feel like I got mastery. So that's the way I kind of, I would say that the knowledge is what keeps me, seeking knowledge is what keeps me uh, sincere, reading Quran, seeking knowledge, trying to, even ayats, you know, even if I understand, even I just try to go and look at the tafsir and and just see, maybe I don't, maybe I, I I understood it at one time, but now it's a different time in my life. You know, like Sheikh Salah Sahib was given a talk in after Fajr, and you know, he was talking to the Imam. So now the khitab is different. So when he's talking to the Imams. He was saying, look, you're blessed by having, you know, I know you get tired, you get exhausted by having people come to you. But just remember that you are blessed with carrying this risala passed down from the Prophet right? And he experienced the hardship and he told his wife, Khadija, that, you know, the days of rest are over. And so, you know, Allah reminded him because he had the responsibility. And you should be reminded, right? <laughs> we raise you in remembrance. If it wasn't for what you have, he sent the Imams. If it wasn't for what you have, the people won't come to you. Subhanallah. So now that they're coming to you, be patient, <laughs> be patient and don't shut them down. Like, you know, sometimes we, 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 we get defensive, you know, and that's, uh, it, so it, it's important to have scholars like that put things in different perspective because one thing that we don't do often is that we don't, uh, we don't keep connections with one another. Mm -hmm. So we work individually, yep. and then we're dealing with the community. We get overwhelmed. We have no outlet to vent. So it becomes overwhelming, and sometimes we just leave the post and go somewhere else so you can start and breathe. But it is a vicious cycle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's opportunities, but it's, a, it's, it's challenging. That's a great segue to another question which I had, which is how can masjids develop better relationships with each other? Um, in the same area, in the same region, what types of collaboration and coordination would you like to see going forward between Masajid, between Imams? Uh, and can you think of any examples where it's working, 
Like you can point to it and say, look what they're doing. That's what more masjids or imams should be doing. So I think, I think naturally there's always the, you know, uh, yeah, as we know, going from imams, going from administrators, uh, it's all new to us. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. As we come, take the post, trying to serve the community. The administrators are professional, also making their time, those that make time, making the time to do khidmah and manage the community, right? So I will say the first collaboration before collaborating with Masajid is within a masjid. And the collaboration is, I know, I know there's some imams that feel that, and this is my personal take, so please uh, don't, don't take it as, uh, 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 um, <laughs> you know, you, uh, uh, they feel that an imam, so I should be the one in charge and in all decisions and you want to be involved in the, you know, in, 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 in all the committees and this and that. That's fine. It's a lot, right? So we have to understand what is our role. Our role is we are spiritual doctors. We are, we here taking in, you know, the mashakil, the challenges and the hardships of the people. And we're trying to take it in. And then we're trying to give them case by case the prescription and that's complicated. It's easy to just send one message and hope that everybody can apply it. It doesn't work that way. You have to first listen. We have to be good listeners. The Prophet ﷺ was a good, attentive listener. So that's number one. Number two is that we have to understand the role of the administration, the board, the, the executive committees. You know, they have roles, right? So we need to know when we stay in our lane. Right. Uh, so one way is how, you know, sometimes we work a lot as imams. I right? work a lot and it's like 24 seven. Right. And, and unless you unless some some imams love the work. Right. Love, but sometimes you have to balance and slow down because you need to take care of yourself. Your family has a right and your you know, yourself, you have a right. So the thing is, we need to learn how to communicate the work that we do. And sometimes what happens is it comes after a year, there's a year review and the administration wants to see what you do. And sometimes they don't come to the programming, so they don't see what you do. And then it's your word against their words and it becomes difficult. And then, and then sometimes the imams get defensive, like I should be trusted, I'm the imam, right? Uh, so it, it becomes complicated. What I've been doing for the past nine years, I have a journal. And in my journal, and I took this, uh, not from a Hadith scholar or something like that, but I took it from, uh, what's his name, uh, David Allen, who wrote the book, How to Get Things Done. Oh, okay. All so, right? So he, based on research, you know, he said that, you know, you have to empty your mind and put it in a paper or put it in a trustworthy source because when you go to sleep, all of these thoughts are going to come to mind and you're not going to be able to go to sleep. So you empty your mind, even if it's a mess, and you go to sleep. And then the next day you organize it and you start putting it in priority. And you start, so I started doing that, right? So for the past nine years, I've been doing that, I write everything. So when I was in Texas, what I would do is I would just bring in sometimes administrators or, 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 or some community members that like to start fitna. I would just bring them to my office. Hatal, come sit down. Sometimes an engineer, sometimes have a seat. So we would talk and I was like, I just want to show you something. Look, I'm working on this, on this project and this is how I work on it. This is my mind map. This is this, this is this. So I showed him this and he was, he's a project manager, right? Yeah. He's like, Imam, you do this? I said, yeah, all my work is here my counseling, my meetings, my projects, my tafsir prep, my hadith prep, my classes, my plans, 
my ideas, all of that is here in a mess. Then I take whatever here, I type it down, I organize it. Oh, so then he stopped being causing fitna. You understand? He started causing. So I, you, you, instead of like jumping on him, and I try to raise his level of consciousness by just, you know, sincerely just educating him. Like this is what some imams do. Right, and we we do the work. We do the work, but sometimes we don't document yeah, it, right? To prove it, basically. So, so, so it's exactly. like you know, when the, when when you put on the hot seat, right? Now, it might be a day that you woke up late. You didn't have coffee. You didn't. Your breakfast wasn't a hundred percent. So your mind is not there, or you had. You know, an argument with your wife, because imams are human beings, right? You had an argument with your wife or a child or whatever. So um, you might not be able to answer. Yes. So you have it written down. You could bring your notebook. You could, Wait, I forgot something. You can open and show, right? So what I've been doing here in, 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 in the Muslim Association of Lehigh Valley is that I, I submit a report. Right, and this report has everything that I do. Right, everything that I do from you know prayers, from um, lectures, khutbas, what are the titles? You know, uh, counseling. You know, a counselor. We try to not put the details, but just right. you know how many counseling sessions, and uh, also uh, service to new Muslims. What what is that about? And uh, interfaith, is prayers, all of that is written. Down. And it's just two, two pages, but it's clear communication because in Harvard uh, Business School, they have these little booklets and, and one of them is called Managing Up. And it teaches you how to communicate with superiors while... Uh, and I, and, I, and I tell this with all the respect to any administrator, whether in Texas, here, anywhere. I said, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, please you right? with all the respect. You know, I'm just trying to communicate with you. Why? Because this responsibility is on my neck. This responsibility of being an imam. So I have to do this, right? For those that attend the, 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 the programs, they can be witness to it, so it's not a big deal, right? And there's some administrators that attend frequently, so they know. They they see that everything that I that I that, that I say I do, I do. And sometimes I'll send them pictures here and there just for to make them feel good, right? But at the same time, you know, I tell them, look, it's about trust. So I communicate. This is what I do. So and I'm just gonna I wanna tell imams that when when you do this, you know, when you communicate and you're sincere with yourself and you're sincere with the community and the board knows that you're sincere with them, but you're not trying to please them. You're trying to please Allah. What you, what you get is you get an administration that um, trusts you. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. that yeah, supports you. You always gonna have, you know, and and this is, uh, you know, uh, it's the way you deal with things, right? You're always gonna have some challenges, right? But it's the way you uh, you 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 face those challenges and you try to bring the positive, the positive uh, uh, results, right? So that's the thing. So you're always gonna have challenges. I don't wanna. Uh, I when I when I was in when I was in Texas when I was in Pearland. I was part of an organization that has 22 masjids. Mm, wow. And when I joined this organization, 300,000 members, right? People cautioned me. People were saying, don't join, don't this, don't that. And I, 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 I listened to them. I respected their, their advice, but I said, look, with all due respect, I'm not going to make your experience my reality. I have a particular way of dealing with with matters. And, and alhamdulillah, I lasted in the same masjid eight years. The only reason I left with their letters of recommendations is because I wanted to serve my parents 
So I moved back to the Northeast to be closer to them. You understand? So, I, so that's the only reason. Not because there was conflict, right? So some people will say, yeah, Imam, but that was, you know, that's a, a, a you know, that's a rarity, right? That, you know, that kind of community, you know, you're fortunate. I said, okay, alhamdulillah, I've been here, you know, a, 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 year, a year and three months. It's been consistent. And actually, you know, I have, I have had a great experience. Yeah, we have to help ourselves. You understand the, the, the community means. because the intention of coming here was what was, was noble, which is to serve my parents. Because I'm like, I'm not going to make the mistake that other people have made of going to serve the community and then their parents pass away and they say, wait a minute, I, I didn't give them their rights. I said, no, after Allah, after the Prophet Sallam, right, is Bir al-Walidain. So how do we apply the knowledge if we don't know how to put the Allah we at, you know, the, the, and prioritize? So I chose to, I said, if I want to teach, I want to teach by leading by example. You know, and my sheikh actually told me, he was like, my, my main teacher in Egypt, he was like, if they don't move, you move. I said, sheikh, you know, I'm stable. He said, I said, okay. So then consulted, you know, with, with my wife and she was like, look, if sheikh Muhammad said, if they don't move, you move, we move. You understand? So... These things, so this is the, 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 uh, the scholarship, family consultation, it, it, it's sincerity in the process, right? Like it's not like, like it wasn't for just an increase in salary. You understand? Like it wasn't for that because I had offers, but I said, if I start moving in that direction, I will never be satisfied. Yes, subhanAllah. That's a great, uh, I think, place to end it for today because we've been going for over an hour. <laughs> we could, we could do no. This is great. I mean, we only touched a few questions, so I think we have a lot more to talk about. So we have Man, to have if, if, if session we, two, if, session three, <laughs> session five. Thank you so much, Jazakal Khair. Such a pleasure to talk and, and bounce ideas off each other.